Hey guys, I'm Paco the Realtor. 16 years of experience helped over 200 families buy and sell the American dream. I'm a local expert, I'm a professional, and I take care of my clients. I pride myself in educating my clients, and I'm also really sarcastic and a storyteller. So why don't you guys get to know me? What's up guys, this is Paco the Realtor Broker, owner of RX Real Estate, local expert storyteller. I am here with my amigo Carl. Say hi Carl. How's it going? You wanna meet Carl. Carl is like a priest. He will take your sins and set you free is what he does. Carl fixes credit. And I know there's a lot of us out there that are embarrassed of our situation. You know, maybe we shouldn't have bought that $2,000 Louis Vuitton that we couldn't pay back. Or maybe we shouldn't have done used our house as a credit card four years ago and now we had a file foreclosure a few years ago. Whatever it may be. We've all been there. Trust us. We've all been there. Carl is somebody you want to get to know. He, as you guys know, I like to bring people on here who provide value to us. Not somebody that's just going to charge money. Not somebody who's just looking for uh, their next paycheck. Somebody who provides value, takes care of the client. Because in the long term, that is what we want. Um, I've known Carl, what, a year now? Over a year now? Over a year. Over a year. And one thing I like about Carl is that... He will meet with you, go over your whole situation, tell you what you need to do and not charge you. He charges when he actually has to do the work and start doing things within your credit. That's huge because how many people do you know uh, um, gave you the value of sitting down, looking at everything, telling you what needs to happen without charging you? That is value, guys. So I'm gonna ask Carl a few of the general questions that uh, our clients ask us all the time. I want it to be more of a how do we do stuff, and um, I'm not going to get into too specific um, situations, but w the number one thing I get is, Paco, I want to buy, but I have bad credit, and I don't know where to start. So, Carl, I have bad credit. Where in the world do I start? Um, the first thing that uh, a consumer, potential buyer should do, if they think they have bad credit, is uh, they should probably get on a monitoring site, a credit monitoring site, uh, like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, or even directly with the credit bureaus. I prefer Credit Karma, uh, number one, because it's totally free. Number two, because you they let you see two credit bureaus, TransUnion and Equifax. So at least for free, the client can go on, see what's on there. It'll show every account that's on there. It doesn't miss anything. And very often the client is surprised, maybe their credit's not as bad as they think, or maybe it's worse, but that's the first step is let's find out. And um, also it allows them to potentially see any errors. They might see something like, I, you know, I never had that, or what's this, you know, and sometimes their credit is bad because of a mistake or an error. And that's good to know too. So the first step is let's just take a look at it. You, the client, sign up for that monitoring service and let's go from there because I can, what they can do is they can send me the credit karma login and password for themselves or their spouse. I can log on and take a look at it and say, all right, here's what I can fix. Here's what you need to do on your end. And here's how we can get you to where you need to be to get approved. Perfect. So step one, find out what the heck's going on. Correct. Yes. Okay. So let's say I go and I sign up for credit at karma, just for example.com, and I get up my free account and I send you the report or whatever I have to do. And um, my assumption is after you get that, you review, you have some kind of maybe session with me over the phone or in person and we kind of go through it? Is that yes. what happens? Initially, um, when I look at their credit report, I will, uh, assuming it's uh, straightforward, if I don't have any questions about what I see on there, I will email them an estimate telling them, all right, here's what I can fix. Here's what you need to do on your end as far as settling or paying some collections. Um, I might say, okay, pay this, pay that. Don't touch this, don't touch that. And then after we're done, your score should be in this range, which should be what you need to get approved for a mortgage. And that's, that's the important thing is uh, they're trying to buy a house because your goal really determines what I'm going to say. If you're saying, I need to buy a house, well, I know we've got to do this and that. If you just say, oh, I'm trying to buy a car, okay, that's different. Maybe we only need to do this and that. Some people will say, I need to pass a law enforcement background check. Well, okay, that's something different. But 
So when you're telling me I want to buy a house, I'm going to get approved for mortgage in this time frame, this year is six months. All right, now I know what we need to do and I'll tell you exactly what it is and what I'm going to charge. Perfect. So he said something interesting. He said about the difference between uh, getting credit for a car and getting credit for a house. Obviously, it's a lot easier. I'm assuming it's easier to get to, um, the credit report that the dealerships run is different than the credit report that the mortgage companies run, correct? Uh, it's not that the report is different. It's that the formula for the score that they use is different. Uh. So a mortgage lender, there are certain things that are important to them, so they use a little stricter formula. A car lender, it's going to be a little less strict. A credit card, depends on what it is, it might be even less strict, might be more strict. Um, so that's why very often when somebody signs up for Credit Karma, they see their scores and they don't realize mm, that's not their real score because they go to the mortgage lender, mortgage lender runs it, and the person's like, why is my score so much lower? Credit Karma said it's this. Because Credit Karma doesn't know what you're going to do. They don't know if you're trying to buy a house or a car or, or whatever, so they're just going to use a very general formula to give you a score that's usually a little inflated. Yeah, and it happens all the time, by the way, guys, um, where people tell us they have good credit, they come in, um, the lender runs their credit, and it's something completely different, and they freak out. Uh, what did I do wrong, and all that good stuff. Um, let me ask you a question. If I got bad credit, and I sit with you, and I tell you the next 90 days, I wanna buy a house. Realistically speaking, if you do your job, and they do theirs, because obviously it takes both of them, mm -hmm. um, is it possible to get um, to work with those clients? Because one of the common objections I get is, I have a 550 FICO score, I need a 620 minimum to buy, that's 70 points. It's an impossibility, so why even try? It's not impossible, depending on the situation. In general, you know, somebody's in the mid to high fives, um, without looking at the specifics, yeah, I could probably get them over 620, 640, you know, right where they're qualifying FHA. Um, if somebody's in the low fives or in the fours, that's almost always because they're currently late on something. They're 30, so 60 they're days. So they're currently late. Yeah, they're ah. 30, 60, 90 days late on their car, their credit cards, whatever. And credit repair can't fix that. No, and here's the thing is, if you currently have a late, current late, you can't get a mortgage anyways. They wanna see a year of no late. Yeah, so you the, the first thing I'll tell them is get caught up on that because you've, you've got to get out of that in order to get your score up anyhow. Plus, you don't want any of those counts to charge off or go to collection because now you've just turned it into a worse problem. It's, it's one thing to have some lates, you get caught up, and as each month goes by, it's going to affect you less and less. But if you just let it you know, go to a collection or a charge off, uh, now it's just worse. What's a common mistake? Maybe, maybe um, this is... Uh, the answer is a little more difficult when you give it to me, and if it is, just let me know. What's a common mistake that consumers make thinking, you know, they could fix their credit, um, to fix their credit or to screw up their credit? Like, I'll give you an example. I have clients that tell me all the time, well, I have, I have bad credit, but my wife has great credit, so I'm just gonna have her add me to her credit card, and that, then my FICO's gonna shoot up like that. Does it really work like that? Again, depends on the situation, but if, Somebody adds, uh, somebody as an authorized user, that's what it's called. If the, uh, let's say in that situation, the wife has good credit, she has credit cards that she's not maxed out on the balances, she's never been late, uh, especially if they have been established for five, 10 years, and she adds the husband as an authorized user, yes, that will help. It's not necessarily gonna shoot him up in the 700s, depending on what his negatives are. Right, right. But it's definitely gonna help and uh, oftentimes when I see a uh, husband and wife situation, I will tell them in the instructions, have your wife add these, these accounts as an authorized user. Um, or often the reverse happens. I'll see somebody with bad credit. Well, it's because they have an authorized user account from somebody, friend or family member, and it's maxed out or there's a recent late and I see that that's the problem, and I'll tell them, I'm gonna take that off for you, because you're somebody that was helping you before as an authorized user, now they're hurting you, so we gotta get rid of it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, perfect. So I got good news, guys. Carl is always available uh, for questions. Um, I, I put his contact information below this, but um, on Wednesday at seven o'clock, that's January 22nd, by the way, 
at Staples in Upland, 300 uh, South Mountain Street in Upland. He is having a one hour seminar on credit repair. So if you want to meet him in person, ask general questions there. Um, I'm sure he'll have a presentation, but I'm sure maybe after he, you can set up some Q&A. If you want to talk to him individually, his information is below. Contact him. Make sure you let him know that uh, you, heard, you heard about him from me. Um, but the key to this whole thing is you got to ask. You can't just say, one day I'm going to fix my credit and buy. When in reality, if you're not going to start, to, it's like going to the gym. I'll just go on Monday. I'll just go on Saturday. You just got to do it. And I can tell you right now that it is painful because you have to face, when people run their credit, you have to face the realities of what you screwed up on before, for the most part. But it feels so good when they're fixed and now you move forward and you start afresh. There's even, not, even right. the process, you know, uh, it's, it's once you start the process, again, like going to a gym, each time you go, while you're going, there's that relief that, okay, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm on my way the same thing with credit repair um once we start even if we haven't got to where you want to be you just you're relieved that you're you're doing it you've, you've already started the process yes so uh new year's resolution is uh go to the gym not just get a gym membership just go to the gym second call carl fix your credit if you guys and you know who you are have told me i'm going to buy i just got to fix my credit and a year later you still haven't done it I have no idea what's stopping you. With rates being the way they are right now, I mean, it would be stupid and asinine for you to wait until houses' uh, values went down. We've had this conversation before. I'd rather you buy a house at half a million at 3.3% than buy a house at 4.5% but at 450 because you actually pay more because the rate is higher. The rate is the key, not the purchase price. And you need to understand that. So for those of you guys that are sitting on the sideline, well, I'm gonna wait for the market to go down no, you buy when the rates are low. So, um, anything else, Carl, that you want to add? Um, Any parting uh, things? I would say um, you had asked me about uh, somebody doing the, doing it themselves, and uh, something I see often when people send me credit reports is when they've tried it themselves or tried to fix things themselves. And the one thing that I, I always tell people about credit repair, it's not so much what you're trying to fix, but to know what not to do what don't touch i see many reports where they've got negative items but they're old they haven't updated in a while and i know they're not affecting them that much and i know that they don't necessarily have to be paid or settled to get approved for a mortgage so i'll tell the client don't touch those we're not going to touch those unless we absolutely have to let's get the score up let's send it in if the underwriter says something then we'll worry about it but if you don't have to pay some collection agency then don't. Because if you do touch it, it, it could reactivate it and now they start reporting. Right, and so very often people think, oh, well, I, I saw on the internet or whatever, you just dispute it, dispute it, dispute it, and very often that's the worst thing to do. So, um, it, yeah, when I, I, I really caution people, be very careful about trying to do it yourself. At least let me look at it and, and, and tell you what, what I think should be done. Awesome. All right, guys, um, Carl's information is below. Um, I'm also going to post information on his seminar that will be on Wednesday or his, yeah, at the, his workshop. Um, so if you want more information on that, just leave a message and I'll make sure that I get that over to you. Um, if you have any individual questions, please reach out to him. His phone number and his emails on there. Don't be shy and don't be embarrassed. Like I said, he's like a priest. Just be honest and say, this is what's on my credit. What do I got to do to fix it? All right, guys. I appreciate it. As always, this is Spock with the Realtor Local Expert Storyteller, and I will see you guys later. What's up, Hector? Hey, guys. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you love the content. Subscribe below or follow me on social media. Just type Paco the Realtor.